Hi, it's Rob from Brush and Balcom. Today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to paint a Howling Griffin's Primaris Intercessor. The first colour we're going to use on the Howling Griffin is Citadel Corn Red. Now the Howling Griffins, depending on where you look, have their armour quartered in different ways. Now I'm going from the quartering which is in one of the Badab World books from Forge World. It's the Imperial Armour Volume 9, Badab War Part 1. And it's from the pictures of the Howling Griffins in there. And they're quartered in this way, whereas if you look on likes of Warhammer 40k Wikia or anything like that, you'll see them quartered the other way as well. Next color they're going to use is Vallejo Black. Now you can use any black for this, so Abaddon Black or whatever you're using. I prefer the Vallejo Black, so it's the one I always use for the stuff like that. It's going to be to do the body of the bulk gun and also all the seals on his power armour. I'm going to be picking a few different chapters to do. I want to do want to do a 40k ultramarine because I've got 30k ultramarines on the go at the moment so there's likely to be an ultramarine very soon. And also some of the other lesser known chapters I think. Just for a bit of a change and something a bit interesting to paint up. Next up is Citadel Lead Belcher. We're going to be using that to paint up all the metal parts on the bolter, the handle of his bolt pistol there, and also some of the parts of his power pack on his back there. I'm using Lead Belcher rather than Chrome as I'd usually use for Imperial stuff, because I want to make him look like he's a bit battle-worn, so he's not 100% clean, he's not just stepped off the ship. So we're using Lead Belcher for this one. Next base colour is going to be Citadel Ricard Flesh. Now when I was researching and having a read up on the Howling Griffins, it said that they were really into the seals and the kind of declarations and things like that. So I thought I'll whack a few more purity seals than I usually would on each one. They are a really interesting chapter as well, Ultramarine Successor Chapter. And it appears to be devout followers of the Codex Astartes too. Next up, we're going to use Citadel and Mephist on red. We're going to do that to do the wax parts of the seals. I'm taking a little bit more time on this fella when I'm painting him as opposed to something to do videos for. Now I'm going to move on to Citadel Corn Red. You can do the helmet at the back here, I'm doing him as a sergeant. So he's got the standard red helmet. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Warboss Green. I'm going to do the lenses on the helmet. A little bit out of focus there, apologies. Next up is going to be a little bit of Citadel Mornfang Brown. And we're going to be doing the pouches and the holster in this colour. I used to always use olive drab for this, probably said before. But I think it was when I was painting up the space walls and I was looking at what colour Games Workshop do the pouches and they always do them in brown. 
It did look pretty good, so I gave that a crack, and since then I pretty much always used brown to do the pouches. Try and get them looking a little bit like leather when we come to highlighting them later. Now I'm going to work on his skin, and for that we're going to be using Vallejo Flesh Base. Now this is kind of like Cadian Flesh Tone, so if you've got Cadian Flesh Tone that works just as well. But I do like the Vallejo colours quite a bit, so I'm using this one. Just want to give that a nice smooth layer of colour. Like so. Next color we're going to use is Citadel Rhinoxide. I'm just going to use this to do his hair. It's a very dark color. I don't tend to do hair this dark, but it's a bit of a change up. So I'm having a little practice while I do this. Like so. Now I'm going to use a touch of Citadel Retributor Armor. I'm going to be using that to do the trim on the shoulder pads, the ammo in the bulk gun too. Just give these a nice smooth layer. You can give them a bit of a highlight later on. Next up, we're going to start moving on to the shades. We're going to start with Citadel Seraphim Sepia. We're going to do the Chest Aquila. That we did with the Rakar Flesh earlier. To so give that a good coat so that you get all the recesses filled. We're going to do the trim between all the joints in his armour as well because rather than having the orangey colour that I tend to use for the Lamentors I want this guy to look a little bit grimy a little bit dirty so we are going to use the Seraphim Sepia and we're just going to go around all the joints rather than painting the whole of the yellow Next shade we're going to use is Citadel Drucci Violet but that we're going to highlight all of the red so we're going to be doing the purity seals as well as the armour as well. Next up we're going to do skin using Citadel Reichland Flesh Shade. Just give this a quick going over. Probably the quickest layer on it. Like so. Next up it's going to be Citadel Nuln Oil. I'm going to be using this on all of the metallic areas. This is all the parts of the bulk gun. Then you've got the little bit around his neck, some of the parts on his power pack and the handle of his bolt pistol in the holster. Like so. Next up is Citadel Agraxair shade. We're just going to use this to paint the gold areas. Also is hair and the Mournfang brown on the holsters. Like 
like so. Now we're going to return to colouring the armour now. So we're going to use Citadel Corn Red for the first one. We're just going to go over all the armour panels. So all the areas that are going to catch the light, you want to be going over that and leaving the Citadel, the Drucci Violet, in the recesses and on the underside of the arms and parts of the legs as well. You don't want to be going all the way round with that colour. So the shade will actually darken it, make it look like the top part's catching the light. While underneath the Drucci Violet is making it look more shaded than it does. From there we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Mephiston Red as the first highlight. Now again you want to be thinking about where the light's going to catch it here. So you want to be doing it sort of about the top. Maybe 50% to 75% of the bit that you've just used Corn Red on. Leaving little bits of Corn Red just between the Mephiston Red and the shaded areas. I also want to try and any ridges like this as well on the edges, just try and go down those ridges a little bit further than you have done with the actual colour. So you can see the Mephist on red and where that's highlighted and how it's highlighted. And now we're just going to use a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet just to give that quite a nice bright highlight. And although we're not doing complete edge highlighting, I'm trying to highlight a few of the edges just to bring out the detail in it and make them stand out a little bit more. So you want to be thinking about where the light's going to catch it and try and get those edges and those areas a little brighter. So you can really see that Evil Sun's scarlet highlight on his foot there when you come to do the next layer. When you see that in the next clip, you'll notice how much the Evil Sun scarlet stands out. It really does look quite cool. He's a little bit far away in this clip, which is a pain. Next up though is Citadel Avalon Sunset. We're just going to reapply this to all of the yellow, making sure that you leave some of the seraphim sepia in the areas where the light isn't going to get to it, and also in all the recesses. So you're reapplying the yellow in the same way that you applied the red. Just doing the panels that will be catching the light, leaving some of the base coat and areas with the sepia on underneath. Now we're going to use Citadel Uriel Yellow. We're going to use this to highlight the previous red. Now it's quite bright, so you don't want to be putting loads and loads on here. And again, you want to be leaving some of the Avalanche Sunset between the Uriel Yellow and the Seraphim Sepia that was used to shade it. Now we've added a little bit of white to the Uriel Yellow. We're just going to do a little bit of highlighting with this along the tops and the edges and the ridges that will be catching the light. What this does, this brings out the detail and makes it all stand out quite nicely. Now you don't want to be doing every ridge and every edge because the light wouldn't really be catching it, I don't think. So you are just aiming to do the top edges with this highlight. Next up, Citadel Rakarth Flesh. We're going to start reapplying the colour to the ribbons, the purity seals, and to his chest eagle as well. Now, the same as with the previous colours, you want to be adding the Rakarth Flesh to about 60 to 75% of the areas that you're going to be using it on, making sure that you do leave the Seraphim Sepia in all the recesses and on some of the areas that would be hidden from the light. Like so. so. 
I'm just going to give him a bit of a rotate so you can see where we're up to and the different layers that we've done so far, how he's looking. See the red and the yellow standing out quite nicely there. I'm going to add a little bit of white to the Rakar flesh. I'm going to start highlighting all the bits that we've just done. So again, you want to be doing about 50% of the areas that you've just covered with the Rakar flesh. Thinking about putting a little bit more on the areas where it's at the top of the miniature so it'd be catching more light. And less towards the bottom, maybe just on the odd edge, just as I was catching a little bit of light. I'll add a little bit more white to the previous mix and just do one final highlight on all of the car flesh areas. So you mainly want to be doing edges and ridges and things like that with this one. And if there is any flat bits or areas that will be catching a lot of light, you want to add some of it to that as well. You may notice that there's no light flickering in the background on this. One of my pals Kev passed me an LED daylight lamp to replace my old tube daylight lamp. So cheers Kev, because it's made a lot of difference on the photos and the videos. Next up is Citadel Lead Belcher. I'm going to reapply that to a lot of the metallic surfaces, making sure that you leave the normal oil in all the recesses. Now, there's a lot of surface and a lot of details on these bolt rifles. They do look quality like all the different types that you can get. So there's quite a few little different areas that you can get with this. Now next up we're going to be using a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome just to do the edge highlights on all of the metallic areas and also to add a little bit more of a bright shine to all the cuts and the bullet holes in his armour. We'll be throwing up a quick tutorial on how to get those scratches and the bullet holes in the armour in the next week or so. Now we're going to start working on the gold again. Now it's not too much of this, so it doesn't take too long really. But again, the same as you did with the red and the yellow. You want to be replacing the shaded retributor armour with just pure retributor armour. To the same extent that you applied the base colour again once you've done the shades. So if you did the colour of the corn red, about 70% of the red shoulder pad. Then you want to be doing the retributor armour down to the same or similar level. Next up we're going to be using some Citadel Liberated Gold. We want to be doing some highlights on the top edges and the areas that will be catching the light a lot more. Also working on some of the ridges and a few little shines elsewhere. Now the thing with the metallic would be they would be catching light from a few different places. So you don't have to worry about getting it all smooth or all one specific layer because it will catch light from different angles as well. Now I've added a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome to the Liberator Gold. I'm just going to use that to do mainly edge highlights on the gold. But also add a few little bits where the light will be catching it the most. With that done, we're going to start working on his face. So we're going to take our time with the face this time. We're going to be using a little bit of Vallejo flesh base and reapplying some of the colour. Now on this I am using a Army Painter Wargamer character brush. It's got a really great point. So I'm just using this and taking my time to do it with a really small amount of paint on the brush. Just so I can get all those areas that the light will be catching. 
reapplying some colour back to his face. So you're trying to do the underside of the eyelid there. With the base coat back down, we're going to add a little bit of Vallejo white to the flesh base. And we're just going to start doing the first highlight on his skin. I want to be thinking about where the light will be catching the skin a bit more. And just highlighting those areas. I've got to say, this fella does really remind me of John Bernthal. I don't know if that's by choice, but it really does look like him to me. So again, think about where the grooves are in the face and the skull. You want to leave those areas a little bit shaded. Now we're going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix and give that another highlight. What do we think about doing this on just the very top edges now, really? And if there's any little details like his eyelids, trying to get a little tiny bit on there, but not too much. Like so. With the flesh done, all we're going to do now is use a little bit of Vallejo white to paint his eyes. So as always you want to drag the brush in a downward stroke away from the point so that the point is always at the trailing edge. Like so. There I've just used a little bit more white and got that into one of the recesses so I'm just applying a little bit more Reichland flesh shade there just to get that shade back in place. Like so. So you want to be doing the pupil now. I'm just going to use a little bit of Vallejo black and put a tiny little spot in the eyes. Now one of the eyes here I am going to make a nice mistake and redo the eye but it's easy enough if you use the same technique to get the white of the eyes sorted then if you make a mistake putting the pupil on it's very easy to just drag that brush carefully across the eye with a bit of white paint get the eye white again and then reapply the black if you have to do it two or three times to get the, right, the eyes right that's fine I usually do at least one eye it takes me a while so the eyes finished we're now going to use a little bit of Vallejo red wash. You can use that to do just around the eyes a little bit. Also going to use it to do his lips and a bit later on I use it to do around the service stud in his forehead. So you can do that now. I'm going to use some Caroberg Crimson from Citadel. I'm just going to do a really nice thin paint on of the Caroberg Crimson onto these two kind of claw marks going down his face. I also want to do some little vertical trickles of blood on there too as they're weeping a little bit. It's running down his face. Not too much, you don't want him blinded by the blood, but just a little bit just to make it look like it's a bit fresh and a bit weepy. Now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Red Wash again. That was just to show that we'd used it on the stud. And now we're using a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome just to paint the stud itself. Now where I added a little bit too much Red Wash, I'm just going around that with some Flesh Base just to put the colour back again. Now we're working on the lenses. So we're going to use a little bit of BL Tan Green just to darken up those edges. You just put this on like you would normally a wash, it should have really been done earlier on, but nothing's perfect, so we're just going to do it now instead. And then once that wash is dry, we'll come back and we'll start getting some reflections on there. So actually going to use Vallejo German Cam Bright Green. You can use the Warboss Green again if you want to. 
it's much of a muchness they're pretty similar i just automatically defaulted to german cam bright green because i love that color and you just want to be reapplying the color and leaving the bl tan green in the recesses so we've added a little bit of white to the german cam bright green i'm just going to paint kind of the bottom maybe two-thirds of the lens with that you want to kind of do it in a almost a bit of a u-shape so there's more at the bottom than there is at the top I've added a bit more white to the mix. We're just going to highlight a little bit less than we did on the previous one. So maybe about the bottom third of the lens. Like so. Now we're just going to use some pure Vallejo white to do little reflections on the lenses. So you want to be painting a really thin white line across the bottom edge of each lens, right at the very front, and a tiny dot at the back there. Now you can see I've messed up that quite badly there. So we're going to use a tiny little bit of the German cam bright green and put a little spot of that there. Then you use a little tiny piece of one of the highlighter greens. And just paint that around the edge and make those spots slightly smaller. Like so. The lens is done. Now I'm going to use some Vallejo Model Air Chrome. I'm just going to paint some of these little grooves and the nicks in the armour that have been put on that I haven't painted yet. Like so. I'm going to use some Vallejo German Grey now. I'm going to highlight all the black on the model. So the tops of all the little rubber seals between the armour plates. Crests of those seals where it's bumpy. The very top part of those you want to be painting with this. Now it's easy to paint some of this on and get it into the recesses as well. If you do that, just get a little bit of black on the brush and gently paint the black into the recess again. And if you notice any areas where you maybe haven't put the black or there's still a bit of the armour colour there, just get a bit of black and go over that. Next up we're going to use some Citadel Mephist on red and we're going to start working on the purity seals. So you just want to be highlighting these as you would with everything else. So where the light's going to catch it more, you want to be adding the Mephist on red to it. like so now we're going to use Citadel Wasdaka Red we're just going to highlight the areas that we've just done I think Wasdaka Red really has a look of when you melt red wax it kind of lightens a little bit it does have that kind of look to it Now I'm going to use Citadel Rhinoxide. I'm just going to paint his hair again. Go over that. Leave some of the Agrax Earth shade in the recesses. You can't really see it to be honest. Maybe Null Oil might have been better than that. But we're just going to get that so it's got a nice smooth colour. Like so. Now I'm going to use Citadel Mournfang Brown to paint his hair. We're going to use this on the little tufts at the front there where you can see the details of it and just then kind of stipple it on some of the areas on the top of the hair as well like so next up it's a little tiny bit of Mornfang Brown I'm going to be painting up the pouches and the holster on the side so you want to be leaving the Agrax Air shade in all the recesses and kind of where it's pressed down and maybe the underside of each pouch. 
like so. We're going to add a little bit of Citadel Ricard flesh to the Mornfang ground and we're just going to start to highlight these pouches. I'm trying to highlight the areas that are probably going to get a bit more wear and tear, so around the edges of the lid there. Along the sides and the edges where it's going to be scraping against things as he's moving forward or leaning into walls. Like so. Now we're going to add a little bit more of a calf flesh to the mix. And this time we're going to be trying to get a little bit of a kind of a stippled highlight with this. So it looks like when the coating has gone off some leather and it's been scraped away and you can see the lighter shade of leather underneath. It looks a bit rough. That's the kind of effort that I'm going for here. Like so. Now we're going to use some Vallejo Black. We're just going to start doing the text on the purity seals. So again, I'm using an Army Painter Wargamer character brush again. I do love the point on it. And provided you are dragging the point away from the model, like I didn't there, you will be able to get some really nice thin lines with it. Now if you do happen to make an error like that I did just there and paint some of the lines quite thick, just get a tiny bit of Ricard flesh and just paint over them and thin them out a little bit. I'm going to start working on the text on these little ribbons. Now, I'm not a big fan of text, but this is how I tend to do it. A little bit blurred, sorry. concentrating too much on the figure and not enough of the video itself so apologies for that but if it doesn't look too good you can always rock out flesh that again and go over it actually go back and edit it a little bit later on now we're going to use a little bit of citadel agrax earth shade i'm just going to add a little bit of grime to all the metallic areas so around all the joins where the metals join each other or the creases or anything like that on the metals just add a little bit of a grax air shade and that just darkens it down makes it look like it's got a little bit of weather and maybe a little bit of grime and dirt built up on there you can see on the shoulder pad there i've penciled in a rough outline for the howling griffins chapter badge too Now we're going to start doing the battle line marking on the shoulder. And this is how I do the arrowhead. Draw a central line first. And then do a vertical on either side of it. Once you've worked out roughly where the top of your arrow is going to be, you can put in that diagonal join that up and try and get it the same on the other side and basically I usually spend a little bit of time evening those out so one side is always going to be a bit bigger or a bit higher or lower than the other or maybe go at a steeper angle you just spend a little bit of time evening that out and getting it so it looks equal on each side and the right size now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Mephist on red and then where it's maybe got a little bit of a blurred line or it's a bit of a smudge or anything like that like I've just actually done with the red you're just going to smooth that over. So I'm just going to add a little bit of white there. I just showed you onto the bit that I've just smudged over. And that's the arrow head completed. So next up we're just going to use a little bit of Vallejo black and put the two vertical ones in there, the straight up Roman numeral. So it's in the second squad. Again, this is always trial and error. You do the verticals as best you can. Some will be a little bit wonky, some won't. You just straighten them out on each side. Once you're roughly happy with them, you can put the cross pieces in at the bottom and the top. And then once you've done that, if you just have a look at them, see how they look, you'll usually find that you need to use a little bit of white just to either straighten up an edge or maybe get one of the little cross pieces the right shape. 
it's just a case of taking your time and trying to do that. Next up, I'm going to use black again. I'm going to start doing the Howling Griffins badge. Now the battle line markings on the Howling Griffins badge, I'm going to put these up as separate videos because I filmed the full thing start to finish, so I'll put them up as separate videos in slow time just to show you how the full thing worked out. But it is just a case of taking your time, being really, really slow when you're doing it. And also you'll see how if I make a slight mistake or make an error where I'm doing something on the logos, I can just go back and correct it. So using a little bit of Avalanche Sunset, we're just going to correct a few of the little errors that have made in the thing itself, such as its mouth there, and this little chest piece. So knock a little bit off there. You've got his lower jaw and his tongue stoking out. And I'm just going to straighten up some of those feathers and use a little bit of black just to paint the right ones in. Like so. And that is the completed Howling Griffin. Really did enjoy painting them up, so if you want to see any other interesting chapters, just shout out. I'm going to try and go through a few of them over the next few months. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media, link below. Thanks very much.